Hello everyone, hope all is well and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be trying out a bunch of new products. So some of the products I have out to try, I have the new Melt Highlighters, I have the Huda Beauty Neon Obsessions palettes, which I've had for a while and I have some opinions about these. I have the new Glossier products, the two new gloss shades as well as the Brow Flick. I have some Makeup Forever goodies, their new setting spray as well as these Artist Nude Creams. I have the Benefit Hello Happy Foundations, the powder and the uh, liquid, and I think I'm going to be using the liquid today. So before we get started, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already, it would mean so much to me, and let's get to it. For my primer, I'm going to use the Glossy Priming Moisturizer, and I'm using this because I have been trying out the Benefit Hello Happy foundation. I've used it twice now in the past two days and the first time I used it I used my favorite Milk Hydro Grip and it looked so horrible I immediately removed the foundation from off my face. It looked so dry and cakey and weird and then the next day I decided to try it again but I used the Glossier Priming Moisturizer and it just looked way nicer. It just looked a lot better. It looked a lot more like skin. Benefit did send me their new powder one as well as their flawless brightening foundation. I'm using the shade 4 in the brightening liquid foundation. They did send me a little paper with all of its information in it. It's a medium coverage liquid foundation that's supposed to feel lightweight, natural, and undetectable on the skin. It contains a special blend of photochromic pigments that instantly adapt to brighten the skin in any lighting, flower acids that help boost radiance, and hyaluronic acid that attracts moisture to the skin surface. It's a 12 hour long wear and it's a natural satin finish. So I'm gonna be using the shade four. I'm gonna just pump one pump on the back of my hand. You get a lot in one pump. And I'm going to take my favorite foundation brush as of late, which is the Royal Langnickel Complexion Brush. I personally love applying my foundations with a more dense brush to begin with. I feel like it really works and blends out that foundation nicely. It really works it into the skin. I always try to apply just what I need, not extra, because I just always want my skin to look natural. And they also came out with a Hello Happy sponge, which is huge compared to like a normal beauty blender. It's like massive. And it's the same shape as the Real Techniques one, but it's a lot more dense. I don't know if I'm going to like this. And I, I did dampen it already. It's just very stiff. Like it doesn't really form to the, your face as well as a beauty blender or the Real Techniques one. This is the first time I'm using it. I always like to go over my foundation after I applied it with the dense brush with a sponge just to suck up any excess product, add a little bit more moisture, and get rid of any brush strokes left from the brush. And this is what it's looking like so far. I'll zoom you in real close so you can see the coverage and everything. I actually don't mind the way it looks today. It does look undetectable today, like it doesn't look like it's clinging onto any of my hairs or my texture anywhere, like it was the first time that I tried the Hydro Grip. Um, I think it actually just really looks really nice and radiant. This works a lot better with a hydrating primer. I like how it looks so far, but I still feel like I want to like a few more weeks trying it out to give you like my full opinion on it, so I'll have to update you in a future video. For my concealer, I'm going to use my favorite Milk Makeup one just because I don't have a new concealer. I have the shade Light. And I'm blending this out with a brush just to get it on there quicker. And I'll just tap with the sponge. This for the under eye sucks. Like I feel like I actually have to close my eye. I don't know, I don't like the sponge at all. The size of it anyways. It's working good, it's blending, out, blending it out nice. It's not picking anything up too much. It does a good job, but I would just wish it was a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of the milk powder just underneath the eyes, just to lock in the concealer a bit right in here. This is really hard. I really have to squish it to get in there. I prefer my beauty blender far more than this one. And I'm going to take this BH Cosmetics and it's my Ray Ray Collection number 4 brush just to dust a really light amount of that powder on the cheeks here, the nose, and a little bit on the chin as well as the full forehead. Even though I don't have product here, I always do this if I'm wearing my bangs down just so that they don't get as greasy quickly. And I'm just gonna quickly dust that off while I'm here. For my bronzer, I don't have any new ones, but I'm gonna use my number one favorite, and it's the Milk Baked Bronzer. And And I'm blending this out with a Smith 115 brush. For my highlight, I'm going to use one of the new Melt ones. I'm going to use the shade Morning Star. Oh my goodness, I used this yesterday as my highlight and I absolutely loved how it turned out. I was a little bit nervous because it seemed a little glittery, but oh my goodness, I love this one. It's a really cool shade. It's like a very, very pale champagne, but it also has kind of a pink shift to it. And I'm going to use that on this BH Cosmetics and it's my Ray Ray number no. 5 brush. This is my favorite highlighting brush. I'm just picking up a little bit and then I'm first applying it like just swiping it and then I'm going to take my brush and really twirl it into the skin. It's so pretty. It's a little bit more int it's more of an intense highlighter, but oh my goodness, is it ever beautiful? It doesn't pick up any texture as well. It's kind of like a creamy powder formula. So, oh my goodness. It's forgiving in that way. It doesn't really pick up on anything. And on the lip as well. And I'm just going to keep this to the side because I think I'll use this as an inner corner highlight as well as a brow bone highlight later on. And for the blush, I'm going to attempt to use the shade Genesis, which is a peach with a gold shift. Oh my goodness. I know one of the owners used it as a blush in one of her Instagram photos, and it looked absolutely beautiful. So I'm hoping that it's going to look like that on me. I'm going to take this BH Cosmetics number no. 3 brush. That is so beautiful. It's not, it just gives such a beautiful radiance to the skin, but it's super peachy. You know me and my peachy blushes, they're my absolute favorite, as well as gold. Gold and peaches are my favorite tones as of late. Ooh, that's so nice. I'm a really big fan of the way that that looks. It just really makes my skin look dewy and not like I'm wearing highlighter all over, all over my face. I think that looks beautiful. And because I'm finished with the skin for right now, I'm gonna try out this Mist and Fix from Makeup Forever before we get started on the eyes. I never like to apply it on my eyes because I feel like that really makes my eyes crease a lot quicker. So I never do it with any setting sprays. This, let me just see how intense. Okay, that's a little bit of an aggressive spritzer, so I'm gonna hold it far away from me. Oh, it smells so good. I probably applied way too much. I feel like I just got out of the pool. I'm just gonna fan myself for a few minutes here. So this setting spray is kind of like the same idea as Fix Plus. I feel really hydrated and I feel like my skin looks really nice and dewy without being greasy. When I was just looking at my skin closely, this blush actually kind of reminded me of the effect that the Cover Effects 
monochromatic things give because I personally I layer these two on top of each other I'll first apply this as base and then I'll apply this on just the high points of the cheeks just to add that glow and radiance to the skin I really love how this base turned out so now going in with the brows I'm going to go in with the glossy products but I'm first gonna take a little bit of this brow lux precision brow pencil in the shade carbon just to fill in my little sparse area here give myself a little bit more of an arch now going in with the brow flick i was so excited to see that they were launching a product like this because i have been using a product similar to this for over a year now it's the mac shape and shade yeah, this is the shape and shade right here just so you can compare um, it's the exact same thing it's the this is also a brush tip the thing with the Mac one though that I feel bad about is I hardly ever use the powder end that comes on here so I always go for an effortless brow look so I love these products to go right in the front here and do little hair like strokes just to add some more bushiness and definition to make them look really natural and then over here I'm trying to grow out my brows right here just to have that model-esque look to them and to enhance that in the sparser areas and just really lightly lightly and I really like this product because it's a lot less pigmented than the MAC one and I like that because you can really control it and not mess up as often and I just run that color through the brows just to make it kind of even and to top everything out off I'm going to use the glossy boy brow in the shade black my favorite brow gel of all time this gel just has the best hold and pigmentation and I love how brow like the finish is because it's a little bit more of a waxy formula okay my brows are very very dark I also tinted them this week so they're very, very intense. Oh my goodness, that's a little bit more intense than I was going for. Okay, so now going into the eyes, I just caught my brows in the in the little monitor here and it's a little bit too much for me. Oh my goodness. I look like that dog. Anyways, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Huda Beauty Neon Obsessions. First of all, the packaging is the cutest thing ever. I absolutely love the way it looks. I don't know, they're very trendy right now. I'm not a fan of Huda Beauty's eyeshadow formula to begin with. I always find them to be a little bit too dry for me. I like my shadows to feel a little bit more like a buttery consistency, not dry. I really find her formula really hard to build a top of it. You put your initial layer of that color that you're using and then it's just really hard for it to build up. It just kind of dusts off of it and that's what happens with these as well but a little bit worse I think probably because it's really hard to formulate bright shades like this I personally wish that she just came up with one uh, neon palette with all the shades in here maybe a less of the shimmers the best one in my opinion the one that fits most to the theme is the orange one just because you get your yellow the oranges the sprite pink this fun lime shimmer I just think this one's the best one the pink one is really fun as well it doesn't really read me neon except for these two shades right here the rest of the shades are quite pastel and like the sh this shimmer shade is pretty good but these ones are a little bit more pastel in my opinion and but the one that I was most disappointed in yet most excited about was the lime green one and because like if you remove the packaging does this seem like a neon palette to you not at all I wish that these five shades right here were out of the picture, like get out of here, you have no reason to be in here. I get that the lime green and the pink, this peachy pink are very complimentary, but if you want to add these peach tones with the lime, I think you could add that with the lip or cheek product, because these two shades, if you mix them together, you're not going to have a good look. And these shimmers to me are not neon at all. Uh, the only one that's cool in here is this one, I really like this one. It's a perfect one to highlight the inner corner with. It has like a lime tealy shift to it and I think it's really unique and cool. But I just wish there was a lot more green to it. And the reason why I was most excited about this one is because lime green is my favorite color. 
growing up, all my rooms, I moved a lot as a kid, all my rooms were lime green, like this color, lime green. But my room honestly now is probably considered lime green because look at how many plants I have in my room. But anyways, getting on with the story, uh, I don't really love these palettes. For, like I'm going to keep them all around definitely because I like to add some of these shadows like as inner corners or like look additives but I can never really I don't think I'll ever use one palette by itself as well like I feel like it, there's not enough depth for me unless I have a winged eyeliner and also I don't like how I can't really use the products without using like a base for the things to stick on. So the one I'm going to be using today, because I don't want to use multiple because that's annoying if you want to try to recreate the look, so I'm going to be using the green one today. I really want to do a fun green eye. For my eyeshadow primer, I'm going to be using the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Fair 00. It's just a white concealer. I love that they have this, and I'm using this as my eye primer because I really want the colors to pop like crazy. I know this is going to be a little bit annoying, but I am going to use this Tarte Margarita Clay Pot as my base just to make the green a lot more intense. Because if I don't add this, then it's going to be a very pastel, weird looking eye. I tried this many times, but I'm going to take this Anastasia A3 brush just to really pack this onto the lid. I love working with bases for eyeshadows because it just makes your colorful looks a lot more intense and have a lot more depth. This is the BH Cosmetics number no. 7 brush and I'm taking a little bit of that and just starting to diffuse that into the crease. But now I'm going to take, uh, what am I going to take, this Smith 232 brush, and I'm first going to be dipping into the lighter shade right here, this really pastel green. And I'm just going to bring that into the crease that is not showing up on me, like at all. Okay, screw, uh, screw that. I'm going to take this brush, it's the BH Cosmetics number 11 brush, and I'm going to dip into the shade right here, neon green. Really pack that onto my brush and I'm really going to pack it onto the outer corner. You can see that it's just making this whole look a lot more neon. And I am going to take that BH Cosmetics number no. 7 brush that we used with the clay pot liner. I just wiped it off and I'm going to dip into the same shade and just start to diffuse that into the crease a little bit more. And now with my finger, I'm going to take the middle shade right here and really pack it on to the lid all the way into the inner corner here. And I'm just going to pat with my finger on the edges here just so we get a nice edge to it. Really packing on nicely with the finger. I'm just going to go quickly catch this eye up to speed and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm actually getting really excited about this look. It is so bright. Okay, now I'm going to do a winged eyeliner. I'm going to be taking the Milk Makeup Longwear Gel Eyeliner. I'm picking it up directly with the brush from the tube. A good trick to get uh, your eyeliner even is to first draw out the angle with concealer. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm taking this Anastasia A1 brush. It's just a really flat brush. I'm just going to follow the angle of my lower lash line and draw straight up. And that will be the base of your winged eyeliner. And when you do both sides, you can really check to see if that angle is the same. I'm 
and you can really easily clean that up. And I'm going to take this really tiny brush, Anastasia A28 brush. I like to take my winged eyeliners just halfway across my lid because I feel like it really makes my eyes more almond. Because if I take the eyeliner all the way into here, it really rounds out the eye. And that's exactly the opposite of what I want when, I, when I'm going for a winged eyeliner. A winged eyeliner. I'm going to take the clay pot liner again with this Sonia Kashuk, I don't know which number it is, but it's this really tiny pencil brush, and start blending it out on the lower lash line. Now that it's still tacky, I'm going to take the BH Cosmetics number 11 brush with the neon shade again. I'm going to take this uh, BH Cosmetics number 7 brush. I'm going to dampen it just for more control and I'm going to place that on the inner portion. I'm going to take the middle shade and for my inner corner highlight. This one seems, this shade is a little bit chunky, so you got to really work it onto the inner corner. It's really flaky, but once you blend it, those flakes kind of disperse. And I'm just going to go catch this eye up once again and add some lashes and mascara and I'll be right back. And here is the final eye look. I absolutely love how it turned out. I It exceeded my expectations. I didn't think it was going to turn out this cute. But I absolutely love how this looks. I almost forgot to mention what I was wearing. These are the Velour Serendipity Lashes and the mascara I used is the Glossier Lash Slick Mascara. Moving on to lip products, I actually have so many to try. I think I'm going to swatch all of them. Um, I also forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, I did receive the hourglass lip glosses these are the unreal lip glosses let me know if you'd like to see like a lip swatch video one that i try on every shade and just give a little bit more of a review on it i think it'd be super fun this pr package is one of my favorites i have ever received i think i'm going to keep it like this forever it just reminds me of like a little kiosk in a store it's so cute but anyways for lip products i have the new glossier glosses as well as these makeup forever artist nude creams that i'm going to swatch all of the shades i don't think i'm going to wear one today i think i'm eyeing this glittery glossy gloss i'm going to swatch these all on my lips so a little bit about these artist nude creams they have in total 12 they're all nude shades with a satin finish so they're just like a liquefied lipstick to me they're very similar to the bite liquefied lipsticks they're exactly what they say, a satin lipstick in a bottle. It's really cool. They're super creamy, and just with one swipe, they're quite opaque. They they have such great color payoff, and they're very long-lasting. I wore the shade number four um, one day, and I was really surprised on how long-lasting it was, and it's very hydrating on the lips, very lightweight on the lips as well. Now for the products I was most excited about for this video are the new glossy glosses. I was so excited to see that they launched these because you know that the original glossy gloss is my number one favorite gloss of all time. It just gives you the most glass looking lips, super pouty, it just really blurs out any of the lip lines you have and it just is super volumizing and just it's gorgeous on the lips. I absolutely love it. So. When they launched these, I immediately ordered them without even thinking twice. I did cute little swatches of these as well. Um, the red one, I will say that I thought it was going to be just a tinge more pigmented, but I'm not mad at it. I actually was really excited about this one to top other products off. I was trying that out the other day when I re first received them. I put the Glossier Leo Generation G on first, then I topped it with this, and it just, I just know when fall time comes around, that's going to be like one of my number one lips because it was just like a brick red, rusty, sheer 
lip and it was so beautiful and the holographic gloss is so beautiful i'm not one who really loves the glittery glosses but this one the glitter in it is so fine it kind of reminds me of the size that's in the fenty glosses if you're familiar with that it is just so flattering on the lips and just ultra gives it like ultra volume even more the, than the original so this formula plus glitter it's like the best duo ever and I really like the shades in here it's like all the shades like gold pink blue green I think it's just really cool bite beauty sent me some lipsticks they reached out to me a few days ago and they're like since international lipstick day is coming out what shades would you like and I picked three I'm gonna use sweet cream because it is a peach and I think it'll just tie in the whole look together with the blush and everything and I'm gonna top it off with the holographic gloss. I'm just going to dab this on. Oh yeah, this is perfect color. Ooh, I'm so excited to have this color. You know I'm in such a peachy lip phase. I'm just gonna dab that in the center and take my finger, blend it out. Oh my gosh, I never had that color in my collection before and I'm so happy I have it now, it's so beautiful. But anyways, now for the moment I've been waiting for. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, this looks so good. Oh my gosh. I am so in love with this combo. <gasps> New number one. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with how this look turned out. I'm over the moon. Okay, I'm going to go quickly fix my whole hair and I'll be right back. And here is the finished final look. I am so excited about it. This has got to be one of my favorite looks I've done in a really long time. I absolutely love how everything turned out. It's super fun. Super summery, super on trend right now. I love it. Now moving on to my good old final thoughts for starting off with the Benefit Hello Happy foundation. I definitely want to continue trying this out. Um, I do really like how it turned out today. It looks nice and seamless on the skin. It's like pretty undetectable. But since I really disliked the first time I applied it, I just really want to get a good feel for it still. I will update you in a future video. I just want to continue using it, trying it out with different primers and stuff like that. But today, I really love how it looked. The Glossier Brow Flick. I'm gonna have to keep getting used to this formula of it, but I do really love these kind of brow tints with the super tiny brush. I just love how easy it is to get those hair-like strokes, and I just really love the look of really feathered, intense brows. I really love how it doesn't have a powder or anything like the MAC one because I always waste that side of the MAC one, but I love Glossier brow products. I love Glossier in general, as you probably can tell from my channel. I use their products all the time. Next for the Melt Highlighters. I really love these. I think the shade Genesis turned out beautiful as a blush. I was a little bit nervous. I thought it was going to look too much like a highlighter, but it just really makes me look very glowy and dewy. Um, without looking super glittery or anything and the peach color is just so beautiful and it matches the lip shade perfectly and the shade morning star is so fun because it can look super champagne or if you're wearing more pink tones it probably would turn out a lot more pink since it does have that pink reflect in it as well and i think it's going to be quickly become one of my favorites because it did sink into the skin so beautifully it truly just looks like a cream would so i'm really really excited about these for the huda beauty eyeshadow palette i do wish that most of these shades weren't in here, but I think the look turned out absolutely stunning with, of course, a lot of the help. This Tarte Clay Pot Liner, without the help of this, these palettes aren't really great. I am going to keep them around, though, just to, like, add on to looks. I'm still kind of on the fence with the formulation and stuff. I just really love the idea of the neon palettes and the packaging is so cute. So I give that one like a neutral. I don't love it and I don't hate it. For the Artist Creams, I really love the idea of this collection. I think it's so smart to just come up with a full, huge range of nude shades. I think the formula is really beautiful as well. I love a good satin finished lipstick. It's really gorgeous and the payoff is amazing. I also really love the size of the applicator. You can really get those details in the cupid's bow. But anyways, I really like those. 
And finally for the Glossier glosses, I think you guys already know what I'm going to say about these is that I am completely in love with these. I love the Glossier gloss formula and now that they're extending the range, it just makes my heart so happy. I love, 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 love them. I can't even express how much I love them. <laughs> But that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and are leaving here feeling inspired. Before you go, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It would mean so much to me and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!